Jeff Karpov stood in front of the federal judge and waited for him to finish speaking. Anything you wish to add, Mr. Karpov? Yes. Jeff began rambling, listing off the reasons he was not entirely to blame, that he was tricked, that he wasn't even smart enough to come up with the whole scheme, and he was real close to making everything right just before the FBI raid. The judge cut him off. You were selling air, he said with a tone of frustration. The sentencing was read, 30 years in federal prison, but how did it come to this? Jeff Karpov woke up on an unremarkable and hot California morning. It was 2007, so Jeff could blame the financial crisis for his unemployment. But that wasn't true. Life wasn't always like this. He tried more than once to elevate himself, not blowing his own horn, but he was a great mechanic. Cars just seemed to speak to him. He knew everything there is to know, his one true skill, but more than that, a lifelong passion. Do what you love, and you'll never work a day in your life. But what about when you can't do what you love? What about when you try and you try and you try, but you just keep fucking it up? Jeff had opened repair shop after repair shop, each one of them failing almost quickly as the one before. He would tell other people a tall tale about why this was, and how it wasn't really his fault, but they were just tall tales. Things always started out great, he did what he knew, he fixed the cars, but then he got other ideas in his head. Ideas of expansion, of greater than, never able to settle. Like the time he ordered custom-made knockoff parts in bulk from Mexico in order to save costs and take in more profit from unsuspecting customers. Not a bad plan, if the parts worked, which they didn't. Business seemed like a different language to Jeff. Still, his life was better than it had been in years, even without a job. At least now at 36, with his wife and two young kids, he'd managed to kick the meth addiction that had plagued his early adulthood. The days of selling drugs to pay the dealers who were after him were over. Ah, fond memories. Even back then when things were at their lowest, at least it was interesting. An opinion nobody in his life seemed to share, mostly due to his family receiving calls from drug dealers with threats due to the money that he'd owed. But cars were not Jeff's only talent. He was a talker. A life of crime, drugs and shady characters gave him a vast pool of things to talk about, and even more inspiration for tall tales to create. He loved to tell people about everything that had happened in his life, even the things that didn't. He shook himself from walking down memory lane. A lifetime of fun stories and failed businesses, but today was different. Today was the day he was going to change his life forever. Jeff hooked up the trailer to his truck and hit the road. When pulling into the nearby parking lot, he immediately spotted them. They looked out of place. A handful of expensive cars parked beside each other with well-dressed men stood nearby. He pulled in next to the last car on the row and got out. These men were brought together by Dave Watson, a software consultant, a man Jeff had kept in contact with after he'd serviced his Land Rover back before he bankrupted his business. Dave had connection with investors in Silicon Valley, and they had taken a particular interest in one of Jeff's contraptions. After some small talk, Jeff began explaining the trailer. The thing he so eloquently called, trailer with solar panels. And yes, that's exactly what he wrote on the patent application. A car trailer with 10 solar panels attached to it, five per row. It was something he created in his garage at home, a stupid idea. However, all the people didn't seem to think it was so stupid. What Jeff didn't know is that green energy was the new thing. The government was pushing for more renewable energy, moving away from fossil fuels and damage to the environment. The biggest investors on the planet were backing this play. The green energy sector was where the big money was about to be made and portable green energy, well, that was the cherry on top. What this prototype represented was a potential first-to-market portable solar solution, and that was a game-changer. But Jeff knew none of this. He left the parking lot that day, shaking his head. After all, it was just a car trailer with solar panels on the back and heavy-duty battery attached. Why, after a lifetime of hard work, would this be the thing to change his life? Dave Watson, on the other hand, 
left that parking lot with a massive smile on his face. This was going to be a billion dollar business and he just managed to get in for pennies on the dollar. Within a year, and with the help of Watson and his associates, Jeff Karapov was able to start moving forward with what he now called the solar eclipse. The investors formed a company called Pure Power Disruption and began their marketing. Jeff, on the other hand, took their $368,000 loan and began working towards producing a better version of the rough homemade solar eclipse that he showed that day in the parking lot. But Jeff didn't leave the business to the suits. No, Jeff was a man who took life by the horns. If life gave him lemons, he was going to squeeze the fuck out of those lemons. Failure did not scare him. He had failed enough already. He boarded a flight and headed to Daytona Beach, Florida. An appointment had been made with a high-end luxury real estate agent, and today, Jeff was going to play a new character, though hopefully not one he would have to for very much longer. He introduced himself as a wealthy entrepreneur in the market for a multi-million dollar mansion. This couldn't have been further from the truth. Jeff had no personal funds at all. He could pay his bills each month, sure, but aside from that, he was penniless. The funds he was loaned were not his to spend, except on bare necessity and the solar eclipse. This meeting had an alternate purpose. I've actually got another project upcoming. Know anyone who might be interested? Jeff asked as they drank champagne by the pool of a stunning house. It worked. Before long, Jeff found himself in expensive hotels with finance professionals. Of course, he didn't fit in. Jeff was a Bud Light drinking, NASCAR watching, American flag wearing ex-meth addict. These were multi-millionaires who knew the ins and outs of everything business. He could not be any further from their level. So Jeff did what he always did. He lied. Told story after story of his awful childhood, growing up in a trailer park, his mother's abusive Hells Angel ex-boyfriend putting a loaded gun to his face. A real hard time, a rags to riches so to speak. Of course none of this was true, but why let the truth get in the way of a good story? They had their strengths, and Jeff had his. He left each expensive hotel with more connections and more meetings planned. Too many to keep track, but that wasn't his job. He was just there to talk. All he really needed to know is that money would soon be coming in. But nothing could prepare him for just how much money and just how soon. His new company, DC Solar, had appeared at the perfect time. A few years prior in 2005, Congress had tripled the value of a green energy incentive. Essentially, the government would cut taxes owed from companies by up to 30% of what they would spend on green energy instead. Due to this, green energy was seeing an explosive increase in creation and adoption. If you had a green product that worked, you had a seat at the table with some of the most powerful businesses on the planet, willing to throw millions, even billions of dollars at you. And in that seat today, was Jeff Karpov. DC Solar, we are a clean energy company that is revolutionizing the solar industry. We brought solar down from the rooftops and we've taken it on the road. The deals being made were complicated and each deal was worth more money than Jeff had made in his entire life thus far. More money than most of us can even comprehend. Companies were working with lawyers and accountants to play the game with the green energy incentives. They would figure out exactly how much they wanted to save, then invest it in Jeff's company. Companies were buying his portable solar contraption to use in every industry you could think of, though they were not the ones that would be using them. Instead, they were purchasing a percentage ownership of each solar eclipse, and Jeff's company would rent them out on their behalf, paying them a return on said rental. He was confident in their ability to do so. DC Solar was in talks with major players in multiple industries to provide solar eclipse units to them by the thousands. They were to be used on movie sets to give power to makeup artists and stars trailers, at music events, at schools, award dinners, you name it, they were going to be there. The solar eclipse was set to replace the diesel generators that often filled the role of providing backup or primary power. Everything was going so well in fact that he decided they were leaving money on the table. He raised the price of each unit by 50% overnight. Generators would now sell for $150,000 each, charging renters $1,800 each per month. 
Such a massive increase in price would usually raise questions or even cause previous investors to bail, but not this time. After all, it was a win-win. All the companies needed was a green energy product to pump money into for their tax break, the promise of return profits was the icing, and the price per unit was absolutely irrelevant. There was one small problem though. At this time, production was in full swing, Jeff was supposed to have 192 generators created, and sitting at the DC Solar Headquarters in Martinez, California, waiting to go. Except, only a handful of them were finished. The rest were still in various stages of production. Investors were coming to inspect their solar eclipse generator, expecting they were done, and they were nowhere near being ready. Luckily, they didn't care enough to inspect close enough, and only looked at the first few rows, which were conveniently placed and finished. Oh, and I did say one problem. Well, there was a, another very, very slight one. Even the ones that were fully put together didn't work. You see, during all the last year while Jeff was flying around meetings, playing businessman, well, he should have been researching and developing a valid product to produce, and he didn't. Instead, he sketched the idea on a napkin and gave it to his brother-in-law, Bobby Amato, previously a mechanic at Ford. When Bobby was later asked by journalist Ariel Sabre, Bobby said, quote, I had no idea how solar worked. Good thing they got Google and all that. Bobby created the entire Solar Eclipse product, a man with zero experience who just Googled it. And the result was surprisingly passable, until you turned it on and tried to use it, of course. Jeff, though, always had a plan. This time, he stuck a diesel generator on the back of each of these trailers as a backup. Yes, the green energy solar power generator that existed to be a replacement for diesel generators had a backup diesel generator, which was often used more than the solar generator was, making the product completely redundant, a $150,000 joke. But no one was laughing, because no one cared. Jeff Karpov and his wife Pauletta Amata had a decision to make. Money was coming in, but due to their rental business model, they were bleeding out. They had two choices, file for bankruptcy and hope for a bailout, or close the business and go back to being jobless. See, right now they could technically stay afloat as new orders were coming in, which meant operation cash on hand. The issue was the rental payments to old investors. If they couldn't fix the generators and get every single one of them loaned out and earning money, they were fucked. Then, during a meeting, they were presented with a third option, Prime. If they used the new order money to pay rental payments, they were crossing a line into Ponzi scheme territory, robbing Peter to pay Paul. To do it, they would need to cook the books to make it look like new order income was actually lease income. Jeff decided this was the best option, and that's what they did. From this day forward, DC Solar was an illegal Ponzi scheme. Did this change Jeff? Did it change how he acted? No, not really. Jeff was still Jeff. He was still buying a new car every week. He was still drinking tequila shots at the extravagant company retreats and shouting about how this, this is the American dream. Still renting out private shows with famous pop stars. Still making a fool of himself when talking about the environment. Still dumping tens of millions of dollars on NASCAR, being the primary marketing partner of the company. And yet, nobody seemed to care. Jeff was living like Jordan Belfort from the Wolf of Wall Street, and his wife was living like this was organised crime. While Jeff was drinking too much, partying too hard, at the company meetings, patting the guys on the back and shouting about how fucking great they were at doing what he asked, usually crime, Pauletta was walking around with two massive trained attack dogs, shouting at people, firing anyone who looked like they might be doing anything suspicious. No matter the appearances though, things were working money was coming in at an alarming rate. Everyone must have known their generators didn't work, but they were still winning. A few small problems here and there, but nothing to worry about. Some new investors were asking too many questions, proof of rentals and things like that. But there was always a solution to this, lying. They claimed that DC Solar had a rental percentage of 80 to 90% for investors' generators, but the truth was, it was always 5% or less, meaning they had 95% of their inventory on site doing nothing. To buy time, they told the investors that rental agreements are confidential, but they needed a way to make these questions go away for good. The permanent solution would of course be rental contracts, 
but nobody wanted to use the faulty generators, so what could they do? How about fake contracts? Jeff made an offer, $1 million for a T-Mobile employee to sign a fake lease for 1,000 generators for at least a decade for $13 million a year. An offer that was accepted without question. This would be the evidence he needed to show new investors. Look, we're renting out thousands of these generators. Everything is good. So long as nobody from T-Mobile found out, of course. Jeff also signed contracts with ISC, one of the companies that managed some of the largest NASCAR tracks. They were going to lease 1,500 generators for 10 years with a cost of $150 million. ISC gave around $8.5 million across two years in payments, but they were paid back $15 million in sponsorship payments from DC Solar. The plan was to fake it until you make it. Just keep going, just keep getting money, and eventually they'll get out from under the problems. So far, it would be impossible to even say everything was going according to plan, because it was going even better than the plan. The only problem was, what they were doing was highly illegal. Word of DC Solar's success was spreading to the upper echelon of finance, not as a green energy solution, but as a place to invest for large businesses looking for US government tax breaks with a large return on investment as a bonus. This led to a whale being caught. Geico, the Berkshire Hathaway owned insurance company, Warren Buffett's company. Geico wanted to purchase 7,980 generators for nearly 1.2 billion dollars in four transactions across three years. By now, DC Solar was massive. The company had ballooned in value, and they had tens of thousands of solar panel trailers on the books, all of which needed to be rented out, but almost none of which actually were. Instead of trying to fix the product, salvage their reputation with users, and start to rent out the dead weight that was dragging them to the ground, Jeff, his wife, and the others who were in on the scheme started to come up with plans to keep the investors guessing. Before now, Jeff Karpov liked to pretend that things were mostly above board. He was doing this to just get out from under a bad situation. Eventually, they would turn it all around and go legit, right? No one would even have to know what they did to make sure they stayed in business. The problem was, is that they were already too deep. Everything they did now as a business was in service of protecting that original lie. And that lie was on a fuse. It was all going to come out eventually. And this is where Jeff decided to stop lying to himself. It was time to double down on the crime. Why were they wasting the new money coming in to create new generators at all? If investors didn't even know that the units were never rented out in the first place, why would they even know that the units never existed either? After all, they had a massive stockpile of unused solar eclipse trailers. No one wanted them in the first place. So why use money to make more when they could just pretend these old ones were new ones? Genius, Jeff thought. They hired fake inspectors to act as independent engineers who would check off the condition of each new unit for the investors who didn't visit the facility. And if they did decide to visit, they just swap out the identifying stickers from old units to newly generated ones before they arrived. If customer C came on a Thursday, the stickers would all line up with their own records of what they thought they owned. But if customer B came on a Friday, the stickers would line up with theirs on the exact same units. In reality, it was probably customer A's units that they were inspecting. Some of the trickier, more diligent investors wanted to know specifically where their property was located at all times. So Jeff devised a plan to plant GPS locators in random locations to pretend the generators were out there being used. If an investor sent someone to the location to check on the merchandise, Jeff would have them swap out the identification and drive a generator over to that location before they arrived. At this stage, it was all a complete fraud. The number of Solar Eclipse units that were sold were over 17,000 between 2011 and 2018. The number they'd actually created was 6,000 or less. Not only was DC Solar in debt to companies who thought they owed them something that generated perpetual returns, returns that needed to be paid back on a monthly basis, but they were in debt on creating these dead-end assets as well. Each deal that came through the door needed to be considerably bigger than the last, and if it wasn't, the jig was up. 
but no deal would ever be big enough to get them out from under the mountain that was now atop the DC Solar business. Each deal added long-term liabilities, while only adding short-term cash injection. More units they needed to make, more units they needed to rent, more units they needed to pay rental for. It was now only a matter of time. Eventually, the IRS started to audit their deals. The findings were astonishing. They found that the solar eclipse generators would roughly cost $13,000 to make, even with a reasonable markup, which means the $150,000 ticket price was over 10 times the fair valuation. To remind you, the US government was using US citizen tax money to subsidize the purchase of these generators from investors due to the green power incentive. Companies were saving $45,000 on their taxes per generator, which was 300% of the generator's actual real value. Due to this being a confidential investor report though, only DC Solar and the two initial investors knew. At this point, things should have gone downhill very fast, but no, they actually went up. We are now partners with the United States. That was the company-wide announcement, and it was true. The Obama administration had partnered with DC Solar to bring renewable power to a selected smart city. Jeff and his posse of criminals were now rubbing shoulders with the biggest companies on the planet and the US government. Amazon, Google, Microsoft, they were all part of the Smart City Challenge. This made the IRS report seem like a distant concern. If they were endorsed by the US government, what did it even matter? So what the generators were too expensive? Who even cares? But some of the investors did care. The ones who Jeff couldn't make deals with or trick were becoming real problems now. They're asking too many questions. But Jeff was wealthy, he was connected, and he was a criminal. So he did what anyone in his position would do, intimidation. A massive Polish loan shark, who Jeff often bragged was part of the Polish mafia and had killed multiple people, was Jeff's solution. Ask too many questions, a few visits from the giant, and the questions stopped. Jeff Karpov's life had turned into an episode of The Sopranos, except he was much richer, and his story wasn't about to end with a fade to black. The husband and wife crime duo started to feel like something was off. The walls were closing in, they were suffocating. It had all gone on for too long and the stakes were now much, much higher. They rushed to get passports made, something they should have done years ago, but were too naive to see this could only end one way. They were now starting to act weird, telling people that they were leaving immediately on an unplanned and long vacation, but they were too slow. On December 18th, 2018, over 175 federal agents were heading towards their target, most to the DC Solar Headquarters, some, including a SWAT team, to the Karpov's home. Within minutes of arriving, they were seizing everything, every computer, every shred of paper, every one of the vehicles in the three museum-like warehouses that Jeff owned on company grounds. A total of 149 cars worth millions of dollars, including classics and exotic models. Jeff called the office. I know they're there. Our passports. Are they there? No, the FBI took them already, said the worker. Oh fuck, Jeff said as he hung up the phone. But he had a plan B. Of course he did. This wasn't his first rodeo. $640,000 in a Louis Vuitton bag and $500,000 worth of meth buried in a cemetery. Old habits die hard. Without passports though, they couldn't escape the country. Jeff continued to conspire with his lieutenants, who'd so far avoided arrest, trying to destroy the major evidence of their fraud, including massive amounts of identification stickers in a separate warehouse. Instead, the lieutenant turned himself in, as did most of the others who helped him over the last seven years. All of them, of course, seeking deals for cooperation. Cooperation against Jeff and Pauletta. And this is where they were caught. Finally, it was all over. On January 24th, 2020, they both pled guilty. Jeff Karpov to money laundering and conspiracy to commit wire fraud, Pauletta Amato to money laundering and conspiracy to commit an offense against the United States. In total, DC Solar, headed by Jeff and Pauletta, struck deals that defrauded more than a dozen customers of almost $1 billion total. Not only that, but all of the fraud was essentially fraud against the US taxpayer. These customers were some of the most influential, rich, and experienced companies in the world of investment. 
They, of course, also defrauded the American people of tax money that was earmarked for a program to help the environment. Companies pilfered the coffers of the American people with tax breaks that they did not deserve based on a fraudulent solar energy company. Though, of course, after this, they were all made to pay it back. And that's where we find Jeff stood before that judge, trying to explain that he trusted the wrong people, that he didn't have the brains to pull something like this off himself, that the reason it even happened was because the businesses wanted nothing but the tax credits. It was all their fault. The bigger the deal, the easier they were to close, he said. The judge sentenced him to 30 years in prison, his wife to 11 years and 3 months, which is where they both remain to this day. But questions remain. Why were the investors not more diligent in vetting the company? Was it due to their ability to benefit from the government program, or were they really thoroughly tricked the entire time? Either way, Jeff Karpov pulled off one of the biggest frauds in history and will spend the rest of his life paying for it.